selected a comprehensive 1-2 for Team Castrol Toyota in the production vehicle category with Cox and Schroeder third. Cliff Weichelt and Johann Smolberger were the lone Class D crew in the top 10. The weather turned nasty overnight and race day dawned with the threat of rain and a drastic drop in the ambient temperature. A drop or two of rain out on a route that had already turned out to be challenging would make life a little interesting for crews. Clerk of the course, Rex Borham and race officials were already discussing contingency plans should weather conditions further deteriorate. The pit crews and service personnel were running through last minute checks trying to keep warm. For competitors it was going to be a long day at the office. It's definitely going to be a very tough day. You know, um, yesterday the prologue 60Ks took us an hour and six minutes. It's, it's long. You know, normally Normally it be doing about 50 minutes, 45, 50 minutes, so it's going to be a long day in the office. Off-road racing is a family-orientated sport with plenty of camaraderie. There is also a great deal of interaction between competitors and enthusiasts who mix freely as the cars are lined up for the start. Tension starts to build as the minutes tick away for the start, but there were no signs of pre-race nerds from Century Racing's Colin Matthews and Alan Smith as they waited to lead the field away on the Atlas Copco Timbertrack 400. National Championship off-road races are these days run to real time. This means the cars start as per their prologue finish times and for spectators the situation promotes plenty of action with cars chasing each other off the line. APSA events are also two races within a race with production and special vehicle cars competing against each other in their respective categories. Out on the route with competitors scheduled to complete two loops of 175 kilometers, Colin Matthews and Alan Smith had a clear road in front of them. In the current conditions, dust was not likely to be a problem, but being first car on the road in a Pathfinder role can often prove to be a difficult proposition. Team Castrol Toyota Hilux of Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin was the first of the production vehicles with Taylor complaining before the start of not feeling well. Problems for a below par Taylor and Birkin were compounded. They were forced to pull off the track with an early puncture. With Taylor and Birkin temporarily out of action, the second team Castrol Toyota of Duncan Foss and Rob Howie moved into an early lead in the production vehicle category. Much to the delight of the locals, the Taylor Birkin puncture lifted Elfie Cox and Jürgen Schroeder into second place in the SP Laser Nissan Navara. Not far behind the Nissan were Marius and Yolanda Ferri, who were leading the Class A contingent in the PHB bet. A good start to the day was to go pear shape for overall special vehicle championship leaders Johan van Staden and Mike Lawrenson in the Atlas Copco bat and crews were too busy to take in some spectacular KZN scenery. Van Staden and Lawrenson were being chased by Gary Bertolt and Ralph Pitchford who were progressing steadily and Hannes Krobel and Henny Testiercher with whoopie doos on the section of route resembling a motocross circuit. Local pair Lance Trithui and Carl Weichmann in the LT Earthmovers bat were in familiar surroundings and hot on their heels was the Zarko Magnum of Volmer and Stunt Base brothers Lawrence and Gerard Duplessis. Slippery conditions were keeping crews on their toes. The elegant fuel porter of reigning SA champions Hermann and Wichard Sulwald picked up a place, whilst former SA champions Quinton and Kali Sulwald also picked up a place in the second elegant fuel entry when Nick and Ryan Harper moved over in the Motorite Revo 4x4. Behind them, another local crew in Daniel Brooks and Tom Lawson were having a steady run in the Ducatas property management bat. Reigning production vehicle champions Yanni Fisser and Jox LaRue were looking for their first points of the season. Nardis and Louis Albert had lost a couple of places, and for the region racing pair of Richard Fuller and Dennis Murphy, it was the end of the road. Is it far there, bud? Is it? Far up top. Broken yeah. down, what happened? It took a right rear wheel off. Right rear wheel off? Yeah, I hit a gate post. Oh, shit. Sure. You know, I think it's a bit of slippery grass, and the uh, back end of the car got a bit loose, and uh, yeah, unfortunately, you step a uh, small margin off the track here, yeah, and you. Uh, Pay the park price, unfortunately. So that's it. 
The next crew to run into problems were Pukki Lubbers Kochni and Rikas Erasmus in the Rubicon Racing Toyota Hilux. A puncture also forced them to pull off the track and find a safe place to change a wheel with a couple of young enthusiasts looking on. After losing time on the prologue, Christian Deploy and Henk Janse van Vieren were pushing hard in the second RFS BMW X3 and were making liberal use of the screamer device that warned slower traffic to please move out of the way. Steady progress was then halted by a puncture, with Loderbrain and Rian Phelan in the same boat in the Rubicon Ford Ranger. Kelsomite bat in the hands of John Telford and Yako Swart was running second in Class P, but the pair were dropping further and further behind Colin Matthews and Alan Smith. A tricky river crossing drew a little group of interested spectators, with classy runners Johan Griffian and Willem Marais under pressure from Evan Hutchison and Donnie Stassen, who started from the back of the field in the motorite bat venom. The opening section of the race route was the same as for the prologue. The run back to the designated service park at race headquarters was mainly all timber and moved into the Burn Valley. The final stretch was through Timberland north of Richmond. There'd been no change at the front of the production vehicle field with Duncan Force and Rob Howie still out in front in Team Castrol Toyota Hilux with a pair looking comfortable. Now in their third full season together, Force and Howie have welded into a formidable combination. Local hopes were still running high with Elfie Cox and Jürgen Schroeder firmly ensconced in second place in the PS Laser Nissan Navara, although it was sometimes tough going on the slippery forest roads. Cox and Schroeder had moved ahead of special vehicle leaders Colin Matthews and Alan Smith, and behind them the Atlas Copco Toyota Hilux of Gary Berthold and Rolf Pitchford had moved ahead of the factory Castrol Toyota of an unwell Anthony Taylor and Chris Birkin. Taylor and Birkin did not put up any resistance and sportingly allowed Berthold and Pitchford to go past. Also part of a small train of cars were Marius and Yolinda Ferry, who were running second in the special vehicle category and first in Class A. Chasing the Ferries in the elegant field porter were Hermann and Richard Sulwald. Former South African champions Hannes Grobler and Henny Testiercher were going along steadily in the RFS BMW X3 and then became the next crew to have uh, progress temporarily halted by a puncture. Brothers Lawrence and Gerard Duplessis were still running strongly in the Zarco Magnum with the LT Earthmovers bat of Lance Trathui and Carl Weichmann sounding healthy. The father and son team of Nick and Ryan Harper are coming to grips with the four-wheel drive motorite Revo and were having their best run of the season, while up ahead an energetic Cully Silwald was now cast in the role of traffic controller. We had an alternator problem since the start. We thought we could nurse it back till at least to the control and see if there's anything that we can do, but the alternator is gone and uh, Unfortunately, we don't carry a, carry a spare, so uh, we're out for the race. An entertaining dice had developed between the 4x4 Mega World Toyota Hilux of Dion Fenter and Ian Palmer, who were being chased by Christian Deploy and Henk Janse van Vieren in the second RFS BMW X3. A little cameo performance came to an end when Fenter and Palmer pulled off the road to check on a power steering problem, and the RFS pair were gifted a place. Their stop to fix an early puncture, Pekki Lapiskachny and Rikas Erasmus had settled into a rhythm in the Rubicon Racing Toyota Hilux. The Bulmeran stunt pair were running ahead of Bloemfontein crew Loder Brain and Rian Hreilung in the Rubicon Ford Ranger. A little miscalculation cost them a couple of seconds, with the pair starting to come under a little pressure from classy leaders Der Pitter and Quirst Klaassens in a Toyota Hilux. At the end of the first of the two loops that made up the race, there was a compulsory 15-minute stop in the designated service park at race headquarters at the Richmond Country Club. It's a short interlude of frantic activity as the technical crews try and sort out problems that might have cropped up on the first loop. Drivers and co-drivers take the opportunity to answer calls of nature and grab a quick snack 
and a welcome drink. In the production vehicle category, Force and Howie held a 43-second lead over Cox and Schroeder, with Berthold and Pitchford nearly two minutes further back, and Ailing Taylor and Birken and Hroblater Stierche completed the top five. The century racing pair of Colin Matthews and Alan Smith were the first of the special vehicles into the designated service park, but crews and race officials were now casting anxious glances at the weather. Matthews and Smith were nearly four minutes ahead of the Ferries with Harriman and Wichard Sulwalz another three minutes further adrift. The Duplessis brothers and Trithui and Weichmann completed the top five in the special vehicle standings.